So guys, and in this video we got a Ionic 5 for a combo inlet charger. And the reason for this is when the customer puts his car in for AC charging, the charger gets kicked out. But it is working on DC charging. We've got the part in, so we'll just show you that now. So that is the part. So that is your charging port there. See this goes down to the battery. This goes down to the ICCU, which is under the seats. So basically what we've got to do is start by discharging the EV system. Now if we open the bonnet, just pull this off here. We've got a 12 volt battery. And then open the glove, sorry, glove box. Open the fuse box. We've got a high voltage interlock here. So this is our first steps. So all we're going to do is disconnect this 12 volt battery and then pull the interlock tab. So we've got a 12 volt disconnected, just make sure you've got both rear doors open and the boot before disconnecting, otherwise you ain't going to be able to open them. And then just get your interlock and put it up. Now we've done that, we need to get the vehicle in the air because we need to disconnect the high voltage cable from the battery and just discharge the component we're working on. So let's get the legs under the vehicle get up in the air and we're going to be at the rear of the vehicle where the electric motor is at the back of the battery so we're now underneath the vehicle and obviously this is our battery here with the plastic shroud and what we're doing here is removing this tray across here so if we look just behind that's the cable we need to disconnect and we're gonna disconnect the high voltage fuse on this one just in case. So basically, out of 10 mils, 10 mil nuts all the way around. Just get that off. So now that under tray's off, we got our high voltage fuse, fuse which is located behind here. And then this is the main power cable for my high voltage battery. So using our high voltage gloves and a 1000 volt trim tool. We're just gonna get that tab and basically pop it out. Once you've done that, pop it forward, pull it out. Like that. We're gonna do the same thing on the high voltage fuse. Just pull it out, push it down. We're gonna leave it five minutes and then we're gonna get our multimeter. Test inside this cable. The battery. Test the power inside the component. Let's see. We've got our high voltage multimeter. Pop it in. So we've got two metal prongs either side. Just make sure you're wearing your high voltage gloves when you do this. As you can see, our voltage is dropping. We've got under 30 volts. So now that is testing our cable, we can now drop the vehicle back down. And it's time for us to start stripping out the rear seat. Yeah, start stripping out the rear seat and the boot lining. So make sure you've got a nice place in your workshop for all customers belonging, bench seat, two rear seats, and everything from in the boot. So basically we have to remove this interior panel where the charger is just here to remove that you have to remove all this out of the boot but to get to the iccu which is located underneath the bench as you would call it you need to remove the entire seats so basically on the front you've got four bolts all the way along and then when you fold down uh, lift up the seat I believe there is another two bolts on the back two bolts for the big one two bolts for the little one and you can remove the whole seats we're gonna get all that removed so now we've got everything out from here we can now start removing the seats so before we take the rear bolts out we need to get this plastic trim out so you've got two push fit clips here and if we go into the rear seats, just in the back, there is another, well, 
there's supposed to be one there, but there's one just down there. So just give it a good turn pull and get this out of the way. So now that bit of plastic's out of the way, as you can see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we've got six bolts there to remove from the seats so we can get the seats up. I don't know if you can see that. But that is from a PDI. So that needs removing. Basically, uh, when the cars come in from new, they have like bags over the seats and they're held, held on by elastic bands. It just looks like that hasn't been removed properly. But once you've got those bolts out, just tilt the seats to the side because there will be a couple of multi plugs at the front of the seat to disconnect. So obviously you have rear, rear occupancy sensors and stuff in the rear seats on these. Right, so as you can see, our rear seats are removed. Our boot linings removed. Next step is to remove the rear corner piece. To do that, you need to remove that piece, which has two trim clips just here, and it'll pop off. And this one has a screw just up there, one there, one here. Now, to show you the ICCU, uh, we are just going to pull the carpet back. So we just need to pop this trim off. We're going to undo this seatbelt just to get it out of the way, just to show you. And we're going to do the same on the other side as well. So this is the ICCU just here. So when you get the ICCU recall and we have to, uh, you know, do further work, it's because we have to replace that unit there. Basically, just got to disconnect it from there. That cable runs all the way across. To the inside of your combo lock charger. So you've got the odd wire coming off here and there. And this, I believe, comes from the top of the control module just under here, which we are gonna take this plate off as well. So let's get that plate off and go from there. So we've got the cover off and we've got this disconnected. Now it is a 10 mil, just undo it and lift it off. Just ensure you use your high volt scrubs again. Doesn't matter if the system's discharged, you always wear them when disconnecting something like that. Now we're just gonna go and disconnect the ICC. So same again with the others, pull the yellow tab out and then fold that down over. And then basically just get your trim tool and pop all these little orange tabs off all the way along till we get over there. We've got a little earth point there we need to disconnect, etc. So we've now got our charging port disconnected. Just up in there. Got two 10 mil bolts and two 10 mil nuts what fell down in the wing just here, which we're gonna get out now. One and two. We put all four bits to remove. Obviously make sure you've got your caps disconnected. The only thing left now is to lift the vehicle back up and run this wire out because there is a bracket underneath what keeps it bolted in. So we're just going to go under now and get that removed. So this is the worst part about the job. So obviously we're down by the battery again. Get the traction motor just up in there. Just above it. Just there. Got two 10 mils, a bracket. Which is holding that wire the top and then if we come around to the back we've got a couple of clips so yeah what we've basically done is got the two clips off and we've had the wire through to here we've also got the undercover for the traction motor off and this little plastic trim that goes across a couple of clips because fighting us because we've got another clip just there and then obviously this box is clipped on but now we've got that undone we can now feed it over the suffering and back up through the hole so that is it that is the cable out we still got to put the old one down for a feed it all through and everything but no actual obvious evidence but i believe it's the temperature sensor was built in what has failed but 
we're now going to get the uh, new one all in. Look at all that, all that, just to get that out. But on the Ionics, completely different. They have a section here and here where you can just unplug it from a multi plug so you don't have to strip the thing out. Hey, okay. so we've got a new combo wiring. And obviously, we've fed it down through, we haven't connected it up underneath yet. We've just fed it through just so we can get the top side. Got the two bolts and two nuts to go in, and then clip it all back in and get your rear strap back on get your plug back in and connect up to the ICCU. So, <clears throat> all connected up down there. Got our strap on, we haven't tightened it. And we've got it placed into the combo charger. We haven't got it fixed in yet because we want to get the rest of the loom back in. So we're just going to go ahead and lift the vehicle up and route it all back through. Wrong way, wrong way, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, so our cable is rooted back in. We've got two 10 mils on just up there. Uh, all clipped in up here on the two clips and then obviously the rear clip up there as well. Got the clip box clipped in and it is sat nicely in the arch. Now, just remember this is a very, very expensive wire. Don't go twisting the wire itself to get these clips and brackets on, twist the brackets around themselves because they're only held on by cable ties so don't go twisting the high voltage cable that's just going to cause you more future problems but now we've got that on we're going to put this under carry back on here or bumper trim as you would call it and then put our uh, rear end of tray on we'll see if you haven't seen it this is your reduction gear sorry this is your reduction gear here. This is your traction motor there. Easier to see from the front. So obviously you've got the drive shafts here going to the reduction gear. And then that's your motor there. Now I have replaced one of these before, I believe. To drop the whole subframe down and then lift the traction motor out of the subframe itself. As you can see, the bolts go through the subframe, etc. So the, the rear ones you can undo but it doesn't actually drop down past this bracket here, etc. But yeah, that is a little insight of your uh, rear motor. So we're just going to get these trims on now, guys, and then we're going to drop the vehicle down and connect everything else back up and then get a high voltage side back on and give it a try. So let's get this finished up. We've got our cable all the way through. We've just got to connect it onto there and then the 10 mil in there. Put the four bolts to connect in there. Once we've done that, oh yeah, and our earth. Once we've done that, I'm gonna connect the high voltage system back up and we're gonna test it before putting all the seats back in. So as we said, we're just gonna dis uh, reconnect the high voltage side just so we can test the charger out. But obviously we've got our high voltage interlock we've already plugged back in. Remember to use your high voltage gloves because we haven't tested the power inside the battery, so we do not know if there's any battery power still in there. So, high voltage gloves, put it on, flip it around, and then push a yellow tab in. We're going to get that done, get this under tray back on, go from there. So, back at the front of the vehicle, high voltage into lockdown, and then reconnect our 12 volt battery. Then get it all back together just in here now that is everything back together in the bonnet so we're just going to close it down because we don't need to be in there anymore next step before trying the charger we're going to plug the car in make sure there's no faults and just clear them all down and go from there so we've got it plugged in and there was no faults in the system while well, there was the same fault but it was a history fault on the AC charger, we are charging at 6.9 kilowatts. So far, so good. It's not disconnecting or anything. So we are gonna leave it for a little while to make sure it does charge. Make sure it doesn't overheat or anything like that. So, once we've done that, we will obviously put in all the rear seats, etc. But at the moment, it's all good. Now we said, that we'd leave it at least half an hour, so that's what the customer's concerned with, that 
within about half an hour of charging it was disconnecting and cutting out as you can see still charging if we go to the dash it's been 50 minutes because there was five hours and 50 minutes on there it's still charging at seven kilowatts so by the looks of it we have fixed the bolt we are going to continue to leave on charge whilst we put all the rear seats and all back in but by the looks of it the bolt is fixed so i believe inside the charging port there are temperature sensors one of them is shortened and given a higher reading than it should or it's just actually getting too hot but fixed it fixed it done it is still on my ramp it's still charging up before we just charge it to 100 percent for the customer as it you know in for repairs uh we are on to our next job which is an isolation fault and a hybrid system so we may potentially end up needing a battery or just connect a fault but that is for another time i hope you've enjoyed this and we will catch you in the next one